All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome out to the Good News Bible Church. And we'd like to start with an opening word of prayer, so if we'll stand together. All right, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day that you've made. Thank you for this building being here that, as a body of believers, we can gather together and sing you praises. And we thank you so much for your Son, Jesus Christ, who's come to the earth to save us from our sin. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross of Calvary and making that death payment that we all owe, buried and resurrected on our account. And we thank you so much for all your love towards mankind. Let's bless this time as we sing to you praises from our heart and open your word, give us understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would turn in your hymnals to page two, we will sing verses one, three, and four. seated. Page 588, all three verses.
we have any birthdays this week? No birthdays. Anniversaries? No? Okay, we'll move on to page 98. We'll sing all three verses. Sixty-seven. Thank you. 
I hope that it is our story that we praise our Savior all the day long, that we share his saving gospel by his death, burial, and resurrection, that anyone who puts their faith in Jesus Christ and in him alone, I hope that's your story that you share with your friends and family. We have uh, announcements today. Majestic Pines at 11 o'clock. I believe Brian is still doing that until uh, Dennis returns home. And we know that Dennis is, and Patty are traveling, so let's keep them in our prayers for their travels there. And the Garden Chateau, Becky and I go over there at 11 o'clock, and it's a real blessing to be able to encourage these old folks that are at the edge, ready to step over, cross death on into eternity, and to give them comfort from the scriptures that they can know where they're going because Jesus Christ is the way. So we really enjoy going and see them folks. And, and uh, also at the Manor House, I'm not sure who's doing that today. It might be Jack going there. Or, and um, Grand Village at 2 p.m., Becky and I will be up there also. And Bible study on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. You have some free time, come on out. There's just a few of us that gather together, but we encourage one another, and it's good to have that extra encouragement midweek. Gives us strength to keep going through the rest of the week. I mean, if we come to church and we only get fed one meal a week, we're not going to be very healthy and strong. So let's keep that in mind. We should be daily feeding upon the Word and fellowshipping with other believers. And uh, upcoming events, we got a uh, camp meeting. When is that, Ron? Today, today, okay, camp meeting today after church. And the Lord's Army auction coming up on June 24th. We see that there's 15 weeks until camp, and that's always a, a great time to get the young kids out, get them grounded in the Word so that they can live their lives without fear and uh, also a uh, day camp there it's kind of broke down the different uh, age groups and the dates there and thank you for everybody that brings the, the goodies there in the back feel free to get coffee and cookies just enjoy hearing the word of God we know that when Jesus was preaching to the multitudes, they got hungry, and he gave them some food. He blessed the food and, and broke it before them. So, on uh, the prayer list here, we have lots of names of folks that uh, need prayer for medical, for personal <laughs> needs, for salvation. And you can uh, go over that list. Uh, maybe you have prayer time at at home there, just bring those folks before the Lord. And he knows their needs before we even ask. But he does like hearing from his children, just like us as parents enjoy hearing from our children as much as possible. Is there any uh, prayer request that we should uh, mention this morning? I put Dennis and Patty for traveling there. We have some praises with Herman's foot and and Victor and and uh, Sir. Okay, Carol is traveling with the grandkids.
Okay, anybody else have something we can boldly bring to the throne of grace? Right, Becky and I experienced that too here on uh, these last couple of weeks. Yes. Okay, K. Foy then. Okay, let's bow our words in the, our heads in a word of prayer here. All right, we thank you, Heavenly Father, most of all for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to this world to save us from a hell that we deserve to a heaven that we don't. And it's not by our works at all that we are saved, but it's by the precious blood of Jesus Christ who gave his life on the cross of Calvary to make the death payment that we all owe. So we just give you praise, Jesus, for coming and taking care of that sin debt that we owed. And we bring these folks before you today with those that are traveling, with Dennis and Patty and coming back from the south. Just keep their vehicle running strongly and keep them safe in their travels. And, and we know that they'll preach the gospel along the way, whoever they see. And also for Carol and and her grandkids, everybody traveling, and it gets to be dangerous out there on the road, and we know that uh, things can break down, so we just ask for protection for them and, and safe travels, and you'll bring them back home as soon as, as they're done with their visitation there. And also for Kay Foy, who has some troubles, Father, you know what they are, and we ask for your hand to be upon her and give her strength and see her through the trial. And Penny Lind, who has the flu, we know that the flu has gone around and, and touched many of us in the area, and we just give you praise for the healing that comes along with the trial that we go through. And uh, the rest of the people on the list, Father, you know the medical prayers, their needs. We ask for the doctors to have wisdom and that you'll help these folks through their trials and, and they'll see that when you heal or whatever your will might be in their direction that, that the trial will pass away and praise will come your way because of the work you do through the trials and tribulations that we all go through. And we just pray for wisdom to our country leaders. We know there's trouble with all kinds of directions and we are but men, Lord, and we need your guidance. So we just give you praise for this country that we live in, even though there's things we don't agree with in our governments, but you have put them over us, so we ask that you'll give them wisdom so that they can guide the people properly and continue to protect our borders. And, and we pray for those in Israel that you will draw upon their hearts to see Salvation is through Jesus Christ because we know that they are yet trying to seek salvation by the law and this Passover time coming up is very big in their minds because you told them that it was something for them to remember forever. And uh, we just ask you to bless the message now and give me the words to say and draw upon anybody's heart here that might be lost for eternity is just a heartbeat away. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We read in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus Christ came to save his people from their sin. He entered in, his entry into the world was proclaimed by the angels, and a star was placed in the night sky to show where he was born. 
Herod had inquired of the wise man as to the meaning of the star and was troubled when he heard that Jesus Christ was born and that Jesus was going to be the king of the Jews. Herod sent four soldiers to kill all male children under the age of two. Herod feared losing his kingdom to Jesus Christ. Yes? Okay, it kind of rings in my ears here, but that's okay. Maybe it'll ring louder in yours, Tom. <laughs> we can work together. All right, so Herod feared losing his kingdom to Jesus Christ, so that's why he had the young male children killed under the age of twos. What a horrifying thing to have go on in a community and cities and women losing their children when their children had did nothing wrong. And God had Mary and Joseph uh, take Jesus into the city called Nazareth to protect him there while he was a child and growing up into a man. And Jesus, being a Nazarene, fulfilled the prophecy written in Judges chapter 13, verse 5. Maybe you can pull that one up, Ron. Turn your Bibles to Judges 13, 5. That's in the Old Testament. Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Josh, Judges 13, 5. It's a prophecy of Jesus Christ. Judges 13, 5. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon, come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarene unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So Jesus Christ was prophesied that it would, he would be a Nazarene. That's where he grew up, and he was there because of needing protection from Herod. That's where his parents had fled. And we see the same story in the Gospel of Luke, that Jesus lived in Nazareth with his parents. So let's turn to Luke chapter 2, verse 39. Luke chapter 2, verse 39 through 52 is where we'll read. Luke chapter 2, 39. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us, thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them, and came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all those sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. So 
So we see Jesus Christ at 12 years of age. His parents are bringing him up to the Passover. And uh, he decides he's going to stay back for a few days. Let mom and dad think about what he's supposed to be doing. And they sought him. I don't know if you've ever lost a, a child in the grocery store or, or something, but the anxiety that comes upon one. There was a time when, when Garrett was missing for a while, and it's just an anxiety of gut-wrenching, where is my child? And we can see that Joseph and Mary were feeling these same things for three days. And when they found him, he was in the temple. And he was learning from the scribes and Pharisees there, or the doctors and those that were knowledgeable in the scriptures, and, and they were astonished at the wisdom the young boy had. And then when the, his parents found him, he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? In the New Testament, these are the very first words that are recorded of Jesus at that age. I don't see any other scriptures that show him talking in the New Testament before this time. So his first words are, Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? In John chapter 6, 29, we get a glimpse of of what is his father's business. John chapter 6, verse 29. John six twenty nine, Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. So that's the business Jesus is about, his Father's work. And his work is that you believe on him, Jesus Christ, whom God the Father has sent. If we turn over to Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. That's some of the other business that's going on. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. We turn back to John chapter 5, verse 39. John 5.39 Jesus is talking to some Jews here and, and that's who he is amongst in the temple at the feast of the Passover in John chapter 5 verse 39 he says to them search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. So you can picture the young boy Jesus Christ sitting amongst the men in the temple, beginning to open their eyes to an understanding of the scriptures. And Mary and Joseph were amazed when they saw him sitting amongst the men. And Mary kept all those things in her heart. In John chapter 11, We see that Jesus Christ has raised Lazarus from the dead. And many believed on Jesus Christ because of this miracle. John chapter 11, verse 45 through 57. John chapter 11. 
verse 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen these things which Jesus did believed on him. Because Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead. So many believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them called Cephas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus, and spake among themselves, as they stood in the temple, What think ye, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it, that they might take him. So we see that uh, many people believed on Jesus because he raised a man from the dead. Nobody has ever been able to do that before. And he also had healed other people, a uh, uh, son of a man that was sick unto death, and he began to heal because of that man's faith. And uh, a young gal that was dead, and he said, no, she's just sleeping, but, but uh, she was actually physically dead, and he raised her. So by the raising of Lazarus, who was dead for four days this wasn't just a few hours that he was unconscious or something he was dead in the grave the stones over the grave and Jesus comes to show the power that he has that's why he let him be in the grave for so long four days and there's a song that uh, my dad likes and it's called isn't it great when he's four days late because Jesus can do anything. He's still on time. When he's four days late, he can still do what he wants to do. And what he wanted to do was show his power. And he raised Lazarus from the dead. And many believed on him. And all these uh, scribes and Pharisees then began to, to want to slay him because the people were following after Jesus. We're going to go on with John chapter 12, just verse 1 there. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, which was, had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. Six days before the Passover. So what is the feast of the Passover? Let's turn over to Exodus chapter 11. Genesis, Exodus, Exodus chapter 11. We see that a plague was pronounced upon the Egyptians. And we'll get an understanding of the Passover. Genesis, or excuse me, Exodus chapter 11, verse 4 through 7. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the 
land will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. For the firstborn, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beast. <coughs> Excuse me. And there should be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between Egyptians and Israel. And we know that the plagues came upon Egypt because they were worshiping other gods, and each plague was against the gods that they were worshiping. And God wanted to show through this plague, the killing of the firstborn of the Egyptians, that the Egyptians were not the same as the Israelites because the Israelites were worshiping one true God. <clears throat> and down in uh, Exodus chapter 12, just the next chapter, we're going to get a picture of the Passover. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take unto them, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two posts, the two side posts, and on the upper doorpost of the house, houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden, or all at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and all the puritans thereof. I guess the word uh, puritans means the inwards. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will spite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. <clears throat> I am the Lord. <clears throat> And the blood shall be for you, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And I, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. So that's a picture of the Passover. The plague was coming, and Moses was given instructions by the Lord to tell the congregation of Israel that they are to take a lamb and set it aside. And it was for a certain amount of days there, and the lamb was to be without blemish a male of the first year. 
The lamb is a representation of Jesus Christ. In uh, verse 5, the lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. If we turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 through 19, we see Jesus Christ referred to as the Lamb. 1 Peter chapter 1, Chapter 1, verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. So Jesus Christ came to the earth to become our Passover, because the blood that they had put on their doorposts and across the mantle, that was just from a little lamb. That blood could not take away sins. But the people were told to eat this lamb during the Passover time. And I think it is perhaps because God wanted some of the lamb to be inside the people, just like Jesus Christ with his Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. So the lamb that he said, eat in haste because the angel of death is coming, the destroyer is coming, eat in haste. And we see that today, death can come upon us at any moment. So we must make a hasty decision. Are we gonna trust in Jesus Christ as our savior or do we think we got another plan? It has to be done in haste. There's not a one of us that knows that we're going to eat lunch today. Death can come. But in the Old Testament, Moses had forewarning that the plague was coming. And it was laid out what they were to do. And the whole congregation was to kill the lambs. We read further in Exodus that there was 600,000 people, men, that came out of Egypt along with the other people that weren't Israelites that were there. It was a large exodus of people from Egypt. So that you can visually see, maybe you can, I can hardly see it in my mind, a group of 600,000 men, how this information is to get out to them that the angel of death is going to pass over and how they are to do this sacrifice and to eat the lamb and it was to be roasted with fire we know that any uncooked meat, it's not finished, it's not done. So the cooking of the lamb with roasted fire showing that it's done represents Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross of Calvary. He said it's finished. So God wanted the lamb to be finished. And then they ate of it. And they showed forth their faith by striking the blood on the doorpost. It wasn't the striking of the blood that was going to save them, but it was they were showing forth their, their faith. And the Bible says that without the shedding of blood is no remission of sins. So that when the angel of death came over the land of Egypt, when it seen the blood on the doorpost, it would pass over. So this is the feast that they're celebrating this Passover happened somewhere around 1,400 years before Christ came to the earth. So they've been celebrating every year. Like we read, Joseph and Mary went up every year unto the feast of the Passover. So let's turn back to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 1 again. And we'll read through verse 19. 
Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which was, had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Mary served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spinknerd, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put it therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he hath raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. On the next day much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And when they're crying Hosanna, they're saying, save now, save now. They needed to be saved. Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees therefore said amongst themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing? Behold, the whole world is gone after him. Wouldn't that be just great if the whole world went after Jesus Christ today? They went after him because they seen his miracles. They didn't have an understanding yet that he was going to be crucified and be the Passover lamb. But the whole world has gone after him. Back in verse uh, 15, Fear not, dire daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. Is a fulfillment of prophecy over in Zephaniah, or excuse me, Zechariah 9 9. Zechariah is in the Old Testament, last couple books. Zechariah 9 9. And I, I did say Zephaniah there. My grandson's here today, so it's on my mind. But uh, Zechariah 9 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a a colt, the foal of an ass. And we read also that this was a, a foal that uh, no man had ever sat on. So Jesus Christ, the king 
is coming to his people lowly, riding on this little tiny donkey. And they're shouting, Hosanna, save us. And they're laying down their clothes and palm branches on the, the dirt, because we are dirt, and Jesus is above us. So they were separating him from us. They were lifting him up ever so slightly, but yet they were lifting him up, praising him, because he was coming, and they were seeking for a savior. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 10. We know that the people were celebrating the Passover, but those animal sacrifices could never take away the sins of the world, and Jesus Christ came to be our Passover. It's by his blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary that salvation came unto man. It's by his death, the death payment that we all owe, that he made on our account. It's by his burial proving to the world that he was physically dead. And it's by his resurrection giving us hope because he has conquered the grave. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Now when he took away the first, that's when he fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the law because we couldn't. So he took away that first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, that every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected for them that are sanctified. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. That's the eternal life thing, it's forever. We're perfected forever. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us that after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. Jesus Christ is our high priest. He became the sacrificial lamb who laid down his life willingly to make the death payment that we all owe. He didn't have to do it, but he did it because he loves his creation. He did it because man failed. He did it because there was no way for us to spend eternity with him and the Father without a blood sacrifice. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh, born without sin. That's what separates us from him. He was born without sin. Sin entered into the world by one man. And death is passed upon from that sin upon all men. There's graveyards all over the world showing us that death is for real. And it's because of sin. And it's because of one man's sin. 
Adam brought that sin and death to the whole world. But Jesus Christ came to bring life to anyone that will put their faith in what he's done. Well, nobody can make the decision for you. You have to personally decide how you are going to get past the grave. We know that the grave could happen at any moment. We're not making our hearts beat right now. We're not taking our breath in on our own. It's as God-given life. When Jesus Christ breathed into that form of dust, into Adam, he breathed life. And that's what we are enjoying. We don't have to think about our bodies functioning. But we're just a moment away from our bodies stopping. So we have to make a decision in haste. Like he told them, eat the lamb in haste. Because we don't know when our last breath is going to be. So the question is, have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Is his blood applied to your account? Maybe you wonder, how does it get applied to my account? It's by your faith in his completed work on the cross of Calvary. Now, it's not our faith that saves us, but it's the object of our faith, Jesus Christ, the Passover lamb, laid his life down for us. It's our faith in him. We're going to let this hand represent you and I. We're going to let this hand represent God. And this wallet here is going to represent our sin. Adam sinned, and death has reigned from Adam until this very day. And we're born with sin. The Bible tells us that our mothers conceived us in sin. That one man brought sin and death was passed upon all men. So we're born with sin. What can we do to get rid of this sin? Some people will tell you, just turn away from it. Well, you know what? You still already did it. So how does that cross out that one that you did? Yeah, you can turn away from it. It doesn't pay for the one you already did. You can say you're sorry, cry your eyes out. That don't pay for it. It's still there. You can try to do better every day. But them sins are already chalked up behind you. There's nothing we can do as a natural man to get rid of this sin. And the Ten Commandments were a real easy short list that exposes us of sinners. And death is coming because of sin. Now God loves us, but this sin separates us from him. It's a barrier between us. We can't have fellowship with sin. But Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary and shed his blood. And he says, Whosoever will believe in him, whosoever will trust that it's by his death, burial, and resurrection that their sins are paid for, can be saved. He shed his blood, proving to the world that he was physically dead by being in the grave for three days. And raising again, showing us that he is stronger than the grave, that we can put our faith in his completed work on the cross of Calvary. So when death comes, is it going to pass over you because the angel of death sees that Jesus Christ's blood is paying for your sins? It's the only hope for mankind. Jesus Christ was God's lifeline from heaven to man on earth. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. He holds the keys to hell and death in his hands. And he knows 
who trust him to save them. So I hope everyone here has trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. If not, you can do it right where you sit. God looks at your inside and he sees what you're trusting in. He sees if you're trusting in Jesus Christ and in him alone. And he sees also if you're trusting in Jesus Christ and a little bit of good works. But we know how a little bit of yeast or a little bit of leaven, the whole lump is, is not, it's leaven. A little bit of yeast leavens the whole lump. So if you've got a little bit of works along with Jesus Christ, you miss the point. The point is, he's the way. It's through his death, burial, and resurrection. So lay down your works. There's no good works that could save us. If there was, then Jesus Christ wouldn't have had to go to the cross of Calvary. But he went there willingly for you and I so that we could have eternal life as a free gift. If you believe that, share it with your friends and family. Get out there and tell the world. Be a fisher of men. We're not going to take anything from this earth, but it'd sure be nice if I could bring my friend along with me to heaven. And who's going to tell my friend? I want to be the friend that's going to tell him. So spread the word. Let's bow in a word of prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the scriptures. We know that there was a time for a thousand years, the dark ages, where they were withheld from people. And now we have them before us, and it's almost like we have too many Bibles around, and, and it's not regarded as being your word. It's just overlooked as another book. But your words of life were written down that we may know that Jesus Christ is the Savior of mankind. So we just thank you, Lord God, for all of those that have gone before us to bring your word forward to us, many of them giving their lives in horrible ways because they believed and they knew that Jesus Christ is the only way. Bless each one as we go forward today. May we get out there and share the good news with all our friends and family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.